Good morning everyone, here from Tokyo, the capital city of Japan. It's going to be our first time in Japan, one of the places that was highest on our bucket list. We were supposed to come here around two years ago, but it didn't work out because of your passport. Yeah, well, because I found out that I could only get a visa for coming here uh, in Brazil, but that rule has changed, so I could just come here without a visa now and that's why we're here <laughs> and we're stayed in a neighborhood called Sumida we're here during the cherry blossom season so so many places are either sold out or just super expensive in the main touristic neighborhoods so that's why we're staying here it's more of like a residential area and we're here with my parents mom and dad <laughs> Hello again. So they're going to be traveling around Japan with us. We're going to be here for almost five weeks. So we're going to be doing a lot of things. So right now we're just heading to the subway station because we're going to be going to Shibuya, one of the popular places to visit. I think it's just a 15 minute walk to get there. It'll be our first time getting on the, the subway, the underground. Station. I don't know how you pronounce it, Kinshiko Station, Kinshicho. <laughs> I'm going to be saying a lot of the names wrong here, that's for sure. And my parents are just getting the one-way ticket, I think, from here. Oh, I don't know if they can get a day pass. We did it a bit different, didn't we? Yeah, because apparently there's a like a pass or a card that you can buy at the airport. I think it's called Suica card. And that's uh, the easiest way to travel around because uh, you can just pass, you don't have to go to the ticket booth to get the ticket every time you take a train or a bus. You just put credit on it online. Yeah. But we forgot to buy it at the airport because we arrived like 2 a.m. Uh, but apparently uh, you can use it on, on your Apple wallet. So that's what we are doing, like this. But you need an iPhone. Yeah, you need an iPhone. Since, since they don't have an iPhone, they have to just buy the single tickets every time. Yeah, you can't get the Suico card here anymore. Apparently, I think before COVID you could, but some like chip issue means that you can't get the physical card. Is that 460 for two? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank okay, you. thank you. So we ended up just asking for help. We've actually got to get on two trains, I think. So line one, Sobu line, and then another train after. Pretty cool how they have these barriers here so that you can't fall on the tracks. Good luck understanding that, man. Quick intermission to talk about the sponsor of this video, Surfshark, which is our recommended VPN provider that we've been using for the past three years while traveling. Even when we are not on the road, it is one of the most important apps that we keep on our devices. Surfshark allows us to have a private connection, keeping our personal information and sensitive data safe from potential hackers on any network that we connect to. With Surfshark, we can avoid online restrictions when visiting internet restricted countries, for example, when we traveled to Turkey, we could only access some online booking platforms by using a VPN. So Surfshark saved us a lot of headaches when booking accommodations. 
Besides that, Surfshark gives you access to all Netflix libraries. Depending on the country that we are in, we have access to limited series and films on Netflix, but with Surfshark we can set our devices to any location and that way we can watch all the series or films that we want. With just one single Surfshark subscription, you can connect to unlimited devices for your entire household. Click on the link in the video description which has the discount code Jumping Places to get 3 months for free and that also includes a 30 day money back guarantee policy. So we've arrived at Shibuya and the moment you get out of the station we're already at the famous intersection which is supposed to be the busiest intersection and walking area in the world I think. Yeah, everyone's crossing now. I think you need to get a view from the top though to really yeah, see it. to see like the people like ants there's even like a soundtrack, music playing from <laughs> I don't know where. Yeah, this is how I imagine Tokyo though. Like the lights, billboards, signs all over. I think at night it's even more impressive. We'll film at night at some point. That was the station back there. Actually here on a public holiday. I don't know if that means it's busier or if it's busier when everybody's working. You'll see all the people in like their business suits. So many people. Yeah, I did read that it's one of the most populated cities in the world. So yeah, really busy. So we're just gonna wander around here a bit. I think it's mainly just shopping places. It is a commercial and financial area of uh, Japan. This place actually reminds me of Taipei a little bit. Shimen. Shimen, yeah, yeah, that specific area. It's similar to this, but yeah. Over there it was in Chinese and here everything is in Japanese. Yeah, there was a bit more relaxed as well, less people. They like playing the music though on the loudspeakers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, not, that's weird because they are very quiet, so when we are walking around in many areas that we walk around here, everything's so quiet, nobody's talk, like talking at all. I love all the colorful signs though, things that are probably just so simple to them and probably boring, look incredible to me. Definitely looks like a good place to come if you're if you're hungry. Oh yeah, they have everything: like Japanese, Chinese food, or even like Western, Italian, everything. Yeah, pizza. Mm. Not actually too busy now. You can walk around at least. So we're going to walk to a place called Harajuku now, and that's supposed to be another nice area to walk around. I think it's kind of like a fashion area. It's about a 20-minute walk from here. Check out the telephone box. It's almost like the British ones, but brown. And you can probably see that everyone's in like winter clothing. So it's actually a lot colder than I expected. We're around April now, the cherry blossom season, spring. I thought it would be uh, a bit warmer. I think now it's around 12 degrees, but there are some moments that it gets to like five, six. It's pretty warm with the, the sun hitting up. But when you go in the, the shade, that's when you feel it. So back there you have Harajuku station. So you can come here by train if you want. And this is what I was saying before, there's like thousands and thousands of people but it's just so so quiet. Never been to a city like this before. 
the people basically whisper between themselves. Yeah, it's like Carol City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carol's quiet. Yeah, very quiet. All I can hear is my parents. <laughs> <laughs> They're the only people that you can hear talking around here. Wow, so this is the street that we were coming for. I think it's called Takeshita. You can already see how packed it is. Let's go inside. So online it says that this place is the birthplace for a lot of Japan's fashion trends. So you're supposed to see people dressed in like all sorts of different clothes there. I haven't seen that many yet. But even when you're walking around Tokyo, you see a lot of different kind of fashion. People are dressed up in different ways. So what you normally see, the kimonos. Yeah, the rain. Did say that it might rain. What's that shawarma? It's funny though, because it's not as overwhelming as it looks. Like we were in Bangkok recently, that had way less people than this. But that felt way more chaotic. Here's kind of like uh, organized the, the people. Also in Bangkok, you get like the scooters riding on the sidewalk, yeah. all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Since it's raining, we're trying to find a place to eat. We wanted a ramen place and we're hoping that this queue isn't for the place that we're looking for. Oh no, it's for donuts. Man, that must be some good donuts. <laughs> Massive queue. So we're going to this place called Kyushu Jangara Ramen. And we're ordering while we're in the queue. I guess to speed things up, that's what they want. I think I'm gonna get the ramen with the chunks of marinated pork. 1140 yen. So they have a few vegan options. Sorry, not for sale. Hopefully, that's only that one. <laughs> mm, yeah, I think I'll go for this one garlic oil. 1420. Yes. It seems like there's some sort of meat substitute. Yeah. This place looks real cool inside. Yeah, very tiny, but cozy. Cozy ramen place. Um, this one for me, vegan ramen. Four. I'll have the one E. One. Yep. And uh, can I get the extra noodles? One. Yeah, one. And a black oolong tea. Two. Two of those. Okay. Yep. Is this us? Yeah. All right. Nice. All together. <laughs> so the ramen is smelling delicious. The warm soup's gonna be real nice. But what did you get? And uh, pork. Pork. pork and garlic. What about Dad? Pork, pork garlic, garlic and some um, eggs. Some eggs. Can you work the chopsticks? No. Not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> a, a little bit. So fun fact: this is actually my first ever ramen. I usually only have sushi when I go to Japanese places. I love noodles. Though. It's really nice because the soup has lots of garlic in it. So it's like a garlic soup. And then the noodles absorb all the all the soup flavor, and then really fatty pieces of pork, really juicy. How's yours tasting? Very nice. Very good. Very good. Mm. Also the black oolong tea. It's in bottle. <laughs> yeah, it's just like normal tea, cold, unsweetened. It's nice though. Do you know what your meat substitute is? No, I have no idea, but it's really tasty because sometimes uh, like the uh, vegan protein is sometimes bland and no taste, but this one is really good. Seems to have a lot of sauce on it. Yeah, almost really? looks like pork really, but... <laughs> yeah, it really does look like meat. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're professional now. Yeah, I'm <laughs> So 
we've now come to a park called Yoyogi Park, right next to the ramen place. It's really dropped the temperature now, so we've all got our coats out since it's got really cloudy and rainy. And we think there might be some of the cherry blossoms around here. This isn't cherry blossoms, but extremely beautiful. Oh, really nice. What did you say that's called, Mum? Acacia. Acacia. Acacia, yeah. Really nice. There's also a shrine and temple nearby, a Shinto one, which we're going to check out after we explore this park. Kind of nice to be in a cold place again. Yeah, I don't remember the last time. Maybe in Morocco, that one. Yeah, just that area. One village. Yeah, that was cold. So I think this is the cherry blossom, but we're right at the beginning. In a couple of weeks time, that's when it will really become pink. But there are some parts of the trees. All right, this one is more impressive. Yeah, everybody's taking pictures. <laughs> that's a, a legit one. All pink. Here you got the famous Japanese vending machines. I haven't shown that yet. You see them in the street. There's one right near where we're staying. They're everywhere, really. Just drinks. Coffee drinks. The other green teas. So the accommodation that we're staying at, which I'll show later on in the video, is already more expensive than normal because we're going into the cherry blossom season. But in about two weeks time, it skyrockets even more. The majority of Japan, actually, the price is just completely skyrocket in about two weeks time like hundreds of dollars more per day like even ours I think if we check like two months from now it would be about 60 70 dollars cheaper per day but we're already paying that much more just because the season's entering so this is supposed to be the main cherry blossom part of the park but right now all the trees are dead only in a few weeks time but we're gonna be somewhere around Japan during the main blossoming time so we'll see it beautiful somewhere funny thing that when we went to Taipei in Taiwan we didn't know about anything related to cherry blossom but when we got to a park there we saw the cherry blossom that everybody was taking pictures but it was just a nice surprise for us so we're now entering that Shinto temple and shrine look at that for an amazing entrance the gateway. Massive. So we're gonna get this thing called Dango Rice Cake. I think it's 450. That's how it's cooked. Hello, one job, one stick. Yeah. Yeah, 450 and please. Smoking. <laughs> so the sauce on top is hot, sweet soy sauce. You can really smell the soy sauce. It's very sticky. The rice. It's good. Not very sweet, the, the sauce, but it is a bit like soy sauce, <laughs> it's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, I thought soy sauce tastes kind of salty, I don't know. Yeah, it's sweet, but it reminds me of the normal soy sauce. I like it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's kind of gooey though, mm -hmm. gooey sticky. A nice snack. And now we're at the main entrance of the Shinto shrine beautiful setting for the shrine and temple I like how the temple seems to be all wooden too looks quite nice with the, the trees around it you ever been to a Shinto temple before no first time yeah my first time too I got a woman in the traditional clothing
So this shrine was completed around 1920 after the Emperor Meiji passed away and also the Empress. So this was like a dedication to them. Apparently it was destroyed in the World War but they have reconstructed it. So I don't think a lot of this will be from 1920s. So Shinto is like the indigenous religion of Japan. Apparently they don't even know how old it is. People say it's as old as Japan itself. And it's like a nature religion. So here people usually follow that. And also many Buddhists, like a mix of Buddhism and Shinto. Ah, so I did read online that sometimes you get Shinto weddings here. I guess that must be it, the husband and wife. Never seen those clothes before. Oh, these ones are nice too. Nice and colorful. Really cool, amazing, amazing. Yeah, there's more here. I think Carol should buy one of the dresses. Yeah, it's like I'm in a movie. It's really cool to be here in Tokyo. Yeah, definitely a meeting all our expectations so far and there's so much more to see over the next few days Vending machines even have like ramen. Does it heat it? It must do, right? I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. No, you could get like food like that, proper meals. So we're now walking to a place called Shinjuku, which I've seen in videos before. Seems to have like some cool bars and restaurants too. Super modern around here. Check out the size of that building. I did read that Shinjuku is home to some of the tallest buildings in Japan. It's also nice to see how many people cycle around in Tokyo. Use these things too. Scooters. People are cycling everywhere. Need to do that more in other big cities. Cycle yeah. around. Yeah, we went to... What, what was that? Ba Basel? Basel? No. Oh yeah, somewhere at Basel, I think. Basel, yeah. And Switzerland. Mm -hmm. They were good with... Uh, uh, bicycles, everybody was using bicycles. There's barely any cars though. Yeah, really good and <laughs> no noise at all. Similar to here, very, very good. And another thing that I forgot to comment about is just how like clean it is. It's just insanely clean. You won't even see like a little wrapper or paper on the street. Like the cleanest pl place ever. And they don't even have bins. Like they don't have public uh, trash or anything. So people just take it home, I guess. Shinjuku now. This is definitely going to be our last stop, I think, because my legs are toast. I've been walking around for like four or five hours. So, just going to cut in here since it looks pretty interesting. We were planning on heading to like a bar street, like I said before. I think this is more shopping, looks like electronics. And it's getting dark now, so it's getting lit up. So 
out of nowhere it started raining again, but this time real heavy. I don't know if we'll be able to make it to the Bath Street. I didn't expect it to get dark already either. So we're already seeing it really lit up. Yeah, we're aborting mission because of the, the rain. We'll go to the Bath Street in the next video at night. It'll be cooler then anyway. I love these places. <laughs> yeah, with the lights, it's really amazing. We did read that there could be thunderstorms today, so that's why we came prepared. Luckily, we're right next to the metro. I don't know what they call it here. Underground, subway, metro, all the same. So this is no ordinary metro. We've come into like a shopping mall. It's a shopping mall metro. So I read online that this is the busiest station in the world. Around 2 million passengers every single day. Crazy amount of people. Although it kind of seems like there's a million now. You found the way? Well, there's a map. Oh, a map. Yeah, I definitely need a map right now. Where are we? <laughs> I don't know where we are. Oh, you are here. Man, where'd it go? Go with the flow. You can even get food in here. Street food. Yeah, sweets. Met Metro street food. Hey, is this new? Okay, do you have some ticket? No, oh yeah. Okay, okay. Please buy the ticket at the green machine. I think gate is that way. That way? That way. Okay, okay thank, you. thank you. All right, so before I said it wasn't overwhelming, but now it's definitely overwhelming. I think this is like rush hour time. Just people coming from every direction constantly. My brain is fried. Yeah, my, my brain is fried trying to work this place out. back at the apartment this place is $210 a day but as I mentioned in about like two months time or a month and a half it's $150 a day so it is just because we're at the beginning of the cherry blossom season so our bedroom is this one and then my parents bedroom is over there they have like a little balcony and from the balcony you can see the Tokyo sky tree which I think is like the highest tower here in Tokyo. We were supposed to go there in one of the videos because you get some amazing views, but all the tickets are sold out. So I think you gotta like buy tickets way in advance. And then this is the kitchen. There is no living room in here. So there's not really many places to hang out, just the bedrooms in here. And then that's the shower. And through here we've got the washing machine, fridge, microwave. The toilet's pretty interesting because you have all like, these like buttons and the seat is actually heated. It, like it's heated even now. And even this is kind of weird like when you flush the chain. Look, water starts coming out here like a sink. So I don't know what the deal with that is. And we're going to be doing many more things tomorrow. So I think it's going to be another action packed day once again with a lot of walking. So yeah, there's going to be a lot more things coming up. And we absolutely loved our first day here in Tokyo. Really incredible place. If you like this one, just drop a like as usual to support us. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Follow us on Instagram and we'll see you in the next one.